pale. Been a bit since I've been on, but uh, my apologies, and now I'm back for one video, and it is summertime, so might be a little less frequent. I figure out some stuff I want to do and record, and not just all this techie, well, not techie, but electronics type stuff. There's some other things I want to start working on, doing some videos on. Today I finally got some more, <laughs> not a big surprise, I wouldn't have tugged on these, some more 18650 battery charger units. And this one was from Anyways, YouTube, uh, YouTube. Eh, eBay purchases always. Uh, these are single cell holders. So, get right at it. the express reason that there's three of us in our family. We all have electronic devices and the price I believe delivered it was only eight dollars and I think it was free shipping. So so you can see how these come packaged. They're in a plastic and then inside the plastic all of the bits to make it yourself because technically that's what you're doing, is in an aluminum frame, plastic chassis. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So we're not so far back all the time. So here's the chassis. I'm assuming that is the toggle button that sits about here. You can see it right there. The big toggle. And we have plastic, small little plastic piece. It looks like that is the end cap because that is the same size as a micro USB and that is definitely the size of a regular sized USB connector. Something is hiding in that. We'll see in a minute. Here are the decals. See, let's turn the other way. So it shows the input, output, capacity. It says 2600, but of course, as I've pointed out in other videos, it's all down to what you decide to install in it because this is just an empty frame. 5 volt in, 5 volt out. This is the battery that I'm going to be using. It's an 18650CE. These are Panasonic batteries, if I remember correctly. Uh, anyways, they come from a laptop. I've made sure that the ends are fairly clean. Uh, these have gone through a few cycle tests to make sure that they actually charge properly and hold a charge for a length of time. They've been charged for several days. multimeter out just for the fun of it. We are running 4.19 so it's pretty good. So let's see what's in this little thing here. Assuming this is a pain. I'm assuming it's probably ah, it's the button. It's the one thing I noticed I hadn't seen yet. And I'll bet you, yeah, some really tiny screws. I'll show you that in just a second. So there it's got focus, so see there's the four little screws that it comes with.
and there's our button assembly. Come on, focus. There we go. So, there's no instructions packaged with this at all, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. There's a bottom spring, top spring. Take your cell, and effectively, that's what you're doing, is just sticking it in like that. So, you can start like that, and maybe. Maybe, maybe. One of the things, if you get these in your assembling, you'll notice there's two grooves cut. Right. Let's see if we can get it. The light on that properly. Right there. Now you can see the groove on that side, and you can just see the other one up here on that edge, which you can see right there. And that's where the printed circuit board assembly slides back on, or in. So when you put it back together, it'll actually guide right into that spot. So, here's the cell. And you can just put it in like that. You don't have to take that out. That will assemble in that particular fashion. And there's the LED coming on. And wants to turn it off, I guess. Again, because no instructions, I'm just taking guesses. I don't know a lot of what's going on here. So I learn so that you learn. There's your USB connector for recharging it. There's a USB connector for charging the device you need to charge. And here I'll take the battery out again and I'll see if I can catch the light properly here. You can see on each of the four corners here, here. Zoom this out or in, but from a distance. There we go. So here and here and here and here. And those are your four screws, which we have just here. And without any of the electronics installed. So I'm going to go back out because this is just general assembly. So here we have the sleeve and the plastic frame that's going to go in. And now you can see the screws are below the edge of this here. This, if I can get, as you can see, has four holes in the corner. Obviously you want to remind yourself the power button goes up. So there's the power button. This is up. So make sure that you're aligning the plastic frame in the right direction. Obviously you should be because by this point you'd have this inside of this frame. The plastic is going to sit on top slightly below flush and then you're just going to attach that with four screws and if you're done and you never plan on opening it up again you could dress it up and put that on the front. I don't plan on doing that because this is for us, it's not for me to be selling to anybody. Where this one does say input, output, capacity, blah, blah, blah. And where I do plan on taking this on trips with me. If I ever have to go through any kind of security or whatnot, I kind of want to be able to show that it's, you know, a legit looking piece of electronics. So I'll probably put that on the bottom anyways because it's going to fit 
inside of this also not perfectly flush uh, base. So chances are that that sticker will still pass back through the frame. So I don't think there'll be any issues. Actually, look at that. Forgetting what direction everything comes apart. <laughs> of course it's going to fit because it actually doesn't have to go through. Anyways, so stop looking like a dunce for a minute. Get this thing assembled. Okay, so something I just noticed, this might float a little high above the battery, but it's going to press in and it'll take advantage of all the springiness so that it will stay good contact with the button on the top of the battery. So the button assembly is just going to fall out if you hold it this way. Obviously you're going to want to roll everything over. So gravity is on your side. Turn the battery assembly upside down. Use your finger to make sure the button assembly stays in the right place. And again remember this is going to press around a bunch here. So until it comes down inside the chassis, this button will not make contact with the actual button on the printed circuit board until this is pressed in, which is finished off. The pressing in this is finished off by taking our little plastic piece, placing it over the USB ports, and now we can go through the process of putting the screws in place. Now this is something I like to do with anything with screws. Anytime that you can get a cross corner attachment, better, rather than letting any of this spring tension that is coming back up. Now admittedly these are pretty weak springs, but any kind of spring tension is bad on plastic because you never know what the quality of the plastic is like. So rather than putting a screw here and here, or here and here, on the two same sides of the other screw, I'm going cross corner or diagonal so that that way I'm getting a good purchase so that the piece of plastic is holding itself in place. Also too, again, remember, metal screws into plastic. That inside frame is plastic. You don't want to over tighten them because you'll just strip the plastic right out. And there we go. Actually, funny thing is, is by not having that front plate, you actually kind of get a lot more of the cool blue come through instead of just through the top little translucent piece of plastic. They intend to act like the light. So yeah, there it is. It's a single cell 18650. As you can see, it 
palms quite well for uh, a gentleman of my size. Uh, it'll easily hold, be held by anybody. I mean, a kid would hold on to that because it's just, you know, candy bar size type thing. One press to turn on, one press to turn off. You can dress the ends when you're done if you want to make them all pretty. Um, keep in mind there are going to be four screws in that small package that comes with these types of devices. So you don't want to lose those because that's what holds that front place up, plate on and holds everything together. So there you have it. Single cell, 18650. These are the contents. Again, button is hiding inside this small piece of foam paper with four screws. Here's your electronics assembly. Your front plate, which is what holds the assembly back in once you screw it all together. And like I said, I got three of these for I think it was about $8, and that's Canadian again for anyone who has only come to the channel for this first video, or for this video first. Uh, so it's like $6 American or $7 American right now with the exchange rate. So either way, very good price. Uh, oh, hello. Just to give you an idea, you could almost make one of these yourself. This is an 18650 charge controller discharge controller which you can see I've done some videos on in my uh, channel. And you can see it's very nearly the same size. The big difference, of course, is that this has the charge port on the bottom side, discharged through the top, where this charges through this port discharges through the electronics connection points here at the back the plus and minus out you can see and there's no uh, controller on the back side at all it's just a nearly vacant uh, circuit board whereas this one has an inductor and controllers and something hiding right there that black thingy Mm, technical words thingy then of course it also has the spring connectors anyways uh, thanks again for watching and uh, subscribe if you'd like and like if you like it uh, let me know whether or not uh, you care much about the videos I do anyways I uh, hope to do some more and get caught back up on doing some videos thanks again